nothing suspenseful going on. I mean, this is just peace and happiness. We peace should... and love and happiness and all sorts of fun hair. stuff. <laughs> okay, so. Kind of figured that getting us all that gear is actually a bit of a waste of money since we've already killed all yeah, of the big it's, bads it's... in the world. No, there's not. No, we didn't. <laughs> it's, it's, in the oh, world, it's all good. You know, the world is at peace. There's no... <laughs> because world peace. Yes. Nualia was the... Was the headmaster line? She was the only bad thing that was gonna ever happen. Ever. I feel like we should got more of a reward then. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you eliminated evil from the face of the planet. Here's your I'm reward. Saying. Here's a couple plums and a few gold pieces. Good job. Okay. So there are Dur during your twelve days. Of mm -hmm. peace. Um, you each did your own thing. Roxy worked on uh, magical items for the party, and everyone just kind of went about what they wanted to do. Um, if anyone wanted to just tell me what they wanted to do, and we'll just do that real quick. So we'll start off with Jess, and then we'll go from there. So, Jess, what did Tangle do in these past 12 days? I'm sorry. Um, hold on. Hold on one quick second, okay? Okay. <laughs> I'm not quite ready, I guess. Okay, Tangle um, spent a lot of time with her horse, uh, practiced um, her, her acrobatics, okay. and um, also... Practice her throwing, but that doesn't. She doesn't seem to use that much anymore. But she still wants to. Okay. She also got a composite masterwork short bow. Yes, Roxy and... was hard at work with. Uh, yes. With everything. But any mostly of... Tangle. Tangle went out and rode her horse a lot. Did any of the items come out cursed, Alex? No. Well, I made. I made. I, I took ten and. I made that amulet so they could I could make it all. <laughs> okay. Um all right, Ken. Gotcha. What did you do during this past week? The, okay, look, hold on. The, uh, in the morning you wake up with a pretty terrible hangover. And rumors about you spread about your greatness. But you seem to have some competition, it seems, as rumors pick up about Coral. Hey, um, Matt, or no, no, I think it's Zach. There's somebody talking in the background, I think. He has company. Yep, I have company. They're all just hanging out at the table. I can mute myself if you want. Yeah, for now, if you will, if you would be so kind. Um, uh, yeah. Yep. So I suppose Muka will get up and uh, walk over and high five Corral in some non odd way after he wakes up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, after that time, uh, not to steal what you would say, Zach, but I suppose catching up with the companions and getting to know everybody, and then probably going out about hunting for trying to find some kind of thing to kill yes. or some baddie to fight, if you would. Yes, yes. So there's been little activity ever since. Um, you brought supposed peace upon Sandpoint. Um, the, the sheriff and the preacher have kept silent about uh, Nualia's doings. And they, they think it would be best to not really alert or bring it to uh, the peasants, not the peasants, but the citizens' minds, if you will. Kind of sweep it under the rug. Because a truth like that would only would only stain Sandpoint even further. Just pulling uh, all suit up. Yeah. Um, who surprisingly is no longer locked up in this week? Um, it seems that one one night the guard saw him missing and opened the cage and then was knocked out. Only, hmm. only to uh, see a, a cat, a lone white cat, walking throughout the cells. Who was that? A lone white cat. Yeah. 
<laughs> that just happened? Yes, that happened while so and so. That's okay. Um, I thought you were talking about Suto for some reason. So we were. Remember. He's he's gone. Yeah. He oh, escaped. Okay. The guard like saw the cage empty, and he went in there to check it out. Got knocked out, and then people saw a white. Well, cat. that's what the guard remembers is a white guard. cat. Like before he opened the cage, he saw a white cat. Yeah. Um. So and then crawl. Um. <laughs> Anything in particular? I know you messaged me some stuff, and we can work on that yeah. definitely throughout this grand campaign. Yeah, I mean that's a, it's a, a lot of stuff, kind of what I've gone over. But yeah, so but if in you essence, looking lay down some groundwork right now, we can. I mean, in essence, what I'd be looking to do is going to the temples, um, you know, that the main one there's, and keeping up a detect evil, uh, looking to create uh, Deborah's fist okay. out of um, out of that uh, thim thistle. Thistle something top. thistle top um, um before you go any further the the top of thistle top was really built by the goblins and like because it was very shadily put together when compared to the inner the below ground structure mm -hmm. the top of thistle top was basically like wood palisades dirt floors and um for the, yeah, for the most part, that was that. But there were some structures on top that were original to Thistletop. But the goblins added on to that, um, to those buildings. So, just like, uh, so you know what you're getting would, into. Yeah, no, I, I, that, I mean, I understand it's kind of slapdash on the on the upper area. It's the lower areas, though, that were, were yes. pretty impressive. Uh, the other thing I think we'd want to do is hit the library or wherever your researcher was, and go over some of the uh, permanent illusions. Broder um, Quink, he is a Thessalonian expert, uh, or as much as an expert as one can be. Um, so you, go, you guys go to uh, Broder Quink during the week, uh, and he, he basically tells you that he's very interested, but to come back later as he is doing his own research at the moment but um, he definitely seems interested in discovering or uh, unencrypting whatever information lies in what you have sketched out but he just seems so busy during these 12 days that you can't really get a hold of him as well as one might like but um, you do find a traveling acolyte of Gorum who, who seems to have a rough, rough past um, in, in, in your searches for someone, a priest of some sort, Coral. Okay. I mean, I don't want to... Uh... It, it depends how much we want to go. I don't want to take up too much of the party's time on uh, yeah, trying to do a little private side thing. I mean, uh, I, I would make it very clear to the party. We had talked about it before when leaving that I wanted to kind of um, create some type of little base structure hold here just so that this all especially wouldn't be overrun again by goblins. Uh, it is a very defendable position. Um, yes. You know, and there's, there's a lot of good that we can do with it here. Some goblins have, uh, throughout this, um, these 12 days, some goblins have tried to lay claim to it, but Shalalu has easily dispatched of those goblins that seem to be straggling back to Thistletop. We definitely need our, our cleaning services and such there as well. Because it's, a... it's just a good hideout because it's covered in thistles. It's basically a thistle forest. Um, I guess, Kevin, you weren't here when I fully described the the area because when they found this place all they saw was a big bunch of thistles and there's a secret entrance and when you go in the entrance it's basically a cave of thistles like there's a small tunnel where you can crawl through like if you're goblin sized you're fine but if you're a medium sized creature you have to kind of like hunker down a little bit and crawl through the thistles to get to the actual um, thistle top like structure yeah it's insane so. Roxy didn't have much difficulties with it because she has a special ability called uh, 
what, what stride that lets her waltz through it. Yeah. And Roxas didn't have much difficulty because he's 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 a he's a medium quadruped. Yeah, Qu- quadrupeds are fine. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm all cool with that, having a base camp or whatever the hell or whatever to store our riches or whatnot. I'm cool. Yeah, but you're a, a good little uh, good little base hold. Yeah. Sure. Let's just make a better bridge. <laughs> yes, the bridge exactly. was trapped. Um, <laughs> where four medium creatures walked on it at the same time. You would fall 80 feet into the uh, <laughs> waves and rocks below. So... All right. Um, the quadrule. Um, well, I uh, spent some time because everything was pretty fast paced ever since I arrived in Sandpoint. So yes. um, Frank and I have uh, spent some time in the uh, Citadel, the worshiping place or whatever, and I've been meditating with him, teaching him my ways. He, he and seems, uh, He seems... Almost like a normal human baby at the yep. moment, um, except maybe slightly more vicious with his goblin bites. So, but they—they they are non-threatening to you, uh, yeah. as he tries to bite, bite your hand every now and then. But uh, his teeth are not quite as sharp yet. So, not too worried about him. Yeah. But yeah, I've just been kind of uh, having him be a little bit more social with the group and uh, trying. I mean, I can't affect the way they think about him, but I don't want to hide him necessarily. So I'm just kind of showing him around. I don't know the impact that it has when it comes to the people in the, the uh, you know, the, the church and everything like that. Seeing a goblin that invaded them, but um, it's, some, just, it's, it's just a child. It worries so. some people, but they see that it's with you, one of the heroes of Sandpoint, and it's quickly dismissed as being commonplace because they, if that goblin were to cause trouble. They feel that you would have no problem dispatching it easily. And, and Quadril's not... Quadril's getting attached to him in the sense that one would be proud of his pupil, but not as a father and son figure, and he he would get rid of him still if he had to. He's, okay. he's not that attached. Um, and then my other time would be spent with uh, Corral and Ken and stuff and, and searching uh, outside of Sam Point. I wouldn't... I'm not the type to just sit around and just wait. I'm always looking for something more, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, Rox Rox's is probably wouldn't be out out and about often. I mean, between crafting and just you know spell spellcaster sleeping and whatnot, she's probably for for sixteen hours of the day. Yeah, we could look for a bear. All right, um, <laughs> you find a bear, but it's not the bear you're looking for. <laughs> so not the bears you're looking for. Um. <laughs> They're they're smaller black bears. Um, yeah, big bear. Yeah, they're they're like they're they're nothing impressive. They're more timid than aggressive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so when they see you in these coming days, they just they they kind of start to run away instead of try to fight. I see. They're okay. they're not they're not a it's not a dire bear or anything like that. Does so these these some point has been relatively uneventful and people are loving it. The festivals died off the festival died off um, the se- after the second second day um, and people returned to their normal working lives and now on the after the twelfth day of peace you're all eating breakfast at the Rusty Dragon as as commonplace now as the heroes of Sandpoint have free room and board there for life um, and in walks Sheriff Hemlock mm-hmm there is still on my screen I don't know if there's something I can do to get rid of it a uh, woman with a bow yes the elfie yeah there yeah. she goes um he has a grim, concerned look on his face, and he's looking over the room for you all. And he finds you, and he walks over to you. He says, Greetings. I, I have pressing matters of, of importance to talk to you about, if you would be so kind. 
Roxy asks, does it involve pseudo? Uh, no, it does not, actually. Do we need to move somewhere else to discuss yes. this? Yes, that, that would be most wise if you all could accompany, accompany me to the uh, to the guardhouse, if you will. Sounds pretty serious. He gives you a look and says, unfortunately, it it is very, very serious, and I wish not to, as he whisp leans in to whisper, I wish not to worry the citizens. Hmm. Well, Mook is ready. All Grabs right. Bacon. Walks. Tangle puts her uh, juggling balls away and follows. All right. Does everyone do the same? Yeah, I guess. Yep. All right. Um, on on his way there, he asks if you're familiar with the the late un unpleasantness. Uh, wasn't that the... church burning? The yeah, church burning, yeah. He goes, mm -hmm. "Yes, the church burning was one part, but unfortunately, <laughs> that was the ending of it. That was near the climax of." of the uh, late unpleasantness. What started it all, I think. I was just a young town guard. As he, um, he tries to stand in the center of you so you all can hear, but not to where the townsfolk can hear. And he says it started with a man named Jervis Stutt. Um, he he was a master wood he was a master craftsman and he decided to build a house on what's now called Chopper's Isle. But unfortunately, to make a long story short, he 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 was he He started to go crazy and murders started popping up on the island and I was just a young town guard when I was faced with a body decapitated with hands severed and hanging above them along with their feet mm. it was it was something that I've never forgotten um, you got like a ritual killer there Yes, he, he killed 25 people in all. But we, we were able to slay him at last. But unfortunately, what came a, a few days after that was the burning of the St. Point's church. But uh, this, this new case reminds me of that very much so. But we will talk more once we get there. And so you will all arrive at the guardhouse. And he, as he sits down, and he says, First, let me all thank you. Let me thank you all again for all you've done for Sand Point. It's fortunate that you've proven yourselves so capable because we have a problem. And I think you can help us with a problem I wish I didn't have to involve anyone with. But, <clears throat> but one that needs dealing with now before the situation grows much worse. Put simply, we have a murderer in our midst. One who, I fear, has only begun his work. Some of you doubtless remember the late unpleasantness that I just recanted on my way here. Uh, and how this town nearly tore itself apart in fear as proper slayings went on unanswered. And, like I said earlier, I'm afraid we might have something similar brewing now. As he takes a deep breath and uh, he recollects himself. Last night, the murderer struck at the sawmill. Unfortunately, there were two victims, and there 
they're in pretty gruesome shape. The bodies were discovered by one of the mill workers, a man, a man named Ebor Thorne. And by the time my men and I arrived on the scene, a crowd of curious gawkers had already sprung up. I've got my men stationed there now, keeping the mill locked down. But the thing that bothers me isn't the fact that we have two bed dead bodies inside. It's the it's the fact that this is actually the second set of murders we've had in the last few days. As he sighs, I come to you for help in this matter. My men are good, but they are also very green. They were barely able to handle themselves against the goblins, and what we're facing now is an evil far worse than goblins, I'm afraid. I need the help, but I'm afraid you'll need, you'll need the help too. You see, I'm afraid that this particular murderer knows one of you as well, as he pulls out a sheet of paper. Mm. And... Rock, Roxy, um... Uh, Roxy asked the question, what... I... There's a strong possibility it could be pseudo. I mean, he escaped, he has a grudge against Sandpoint, he probably deduced at some point, you know, New Ollie is dead. And he's a pretty sneaky fellow, so... We just have to see who he knows, exactly. You got, uh, you got any paperwork or documents on this from before? One second, guys, I'm trying to find... I don't think it's pseudo. Oh, all right. This this particular message has written in blood. Um, Muka and party, and I will show it to you now. We have spoken of this before, my master. Now it begins. Join the pack, and it will end. Your lordship. Huh. And, uh, he, he he goes, I, I really don't think any of you had anything to do with this murder. And I really think it's something just throw the trail off of who really did it. But the fact that there is this note means that he's from, I think, that you've met him before. But then again, who hasn't met you now? But maybe you can make heads or tails of this. Is this Noah's found pinned to the sleeve of the, of the latest victim by a splinter of wood jag st um, stapled into his arms with a stake of wood? Uh. And he says, yeah. I, like I said before, I don't think any of you had anything to do with this, but if word of this note gets out, I'm afraid, well, people, a person can be smart, but as as wise people have said before, I mean, people can be dumb. I'd like to uh, speak with Evanworth Thorne, and I'll read them. Ebor Thorne? Uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't know how to spell it, so I was... All right, yeah. Everworth. Oh, let me, uh... I think it's... Um... What is it? Ebor Thorn. I'll, I'll Ebor. type it out. Alright, sounds good. He, he I, says, I'd like to go speak with them. He says, Ebor Thorn is a, is a calm soul, and... Unfortunately, he was awoken... By the sights. So... He was he was close by when the murders happened. Well, he was coming in for a shift. I shouldn't say awoken, but he was he was uh, stirred by what he saw, and he were came the bodies, to me immediately. Yes, and the uh, bodies were discovered in the mill. Yes, it, he says there's a few leads I have, if, and it's up to you if you want to help me at, or not, you know, but 
Here well, are some well, news. Well, I'm just bored sitting around town waiting for things to happen. So I, I, I thank oh. you from the bot. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm going to type out the news now. Box, yeah, if it's pseudo, then it's kind of our responsibility. Anyway. Thing is, though, he pseudo struck me as mostly sane. Writing messages in blood is kind of. All right, bit dark. I don't, I don't think it's pseudo. I think yeah. pseudo probably fled. Well, so I have an idea. Does uh, Sheriff Hemlock sell pseudo's journal? They can compare the handwriting. Sort of. Um, we do not have anything of his possessions anymore. Oh, wait, you have pseudo's journal, don't you? Yeah, we have pseudo's journal. Oh, you yeah, have yeah, it. We do. Or Roxas does. Right. <laughs> Roxy pulls that out and compares it to the handwriting. It doesn't look the same to me. In terms of looking at them side by side, but who knows? He goes, I, I will get someone on it right now. And uh, he says there's a few more things you should know. Um, the, the first string of murders um, that occurred were three con men from the town of Aldoria. <laughs> And they were found murdered in an abandoned barn south of town a few days ago. Uh, it, this is just like information about the leads right now that he's giving you. Um, but their bodyguard survived the assault, but he has gone insane and was sent to Habs Sanatorium, a privately run restaurant for their insane. And there's there's something that I can't make out here. There's some type of rune etched into the chest of some of the victims. I'm not an expert on runes, but perhaps you can make heads or tails about it, or perhaps someone in town might know. And there's one more thing here. One of the murders at Sandpoint Limber Mill was Katrine Bender. Katrine Ooh. Bender. Uh, and so I have locked up oh. Ben Bender. Oh, well. wait, is that that? Aww. Um, no, it's Katrine not. was Shayla's sister. Yeah. Oh. It's Shayla's sister, yeah. Oh. Um, he goes, I do not think Ben Bender had any part of this, and it's mainly just to wait until he calms down but he is my only suspect right now and if you wish to talk to him you, you can definitely do that quadro has built up a, quadro's built up a reputation with ben Den, ben Den, nice yeah that's perfect so um so i mean it really i would quadro wants to go meet ebor and he thinks that he can grill him and read him just human live tech just read him and then Ben Vender, he's got a reputation with, so he could just talk with Ben and figure it out. But it's up to the rest of the group. I'm not going to go. Rox, Rox, Roxy agrees. Might be the best if Mooka get outside. I'll, I'll come along for Ember Weaver guy. <laughs> and, uh, but, oh. I, I mean, it doesn't... I can see why you might think it might be him... Sheriff, I mean, he did ha does have a bad of a bad history with Luca, but I don't think he'd go as far to murder his own daughter and three random people outside of yes, I, some barn outside I don't, of town. I, I don't think he did it either, but I, he he might have details on her whereabouts just, and stuff. It's, just it's a formality. Law. It's just the law, you know. If you have a suspect, regardless of what you think, we have to lock him up. But I really do think he's innocent, and I do plan on releasing him soon. But if you want to talk to him before he is released, he is all yours to question. And Let's go. Well, I also suggest that you check out the murder scene first, as the bodies are still there. <laughs> oh. oh, man. All right, here. Perhaps I can make heads or tails out of it. We're right back. All right. But the murder scene sounds good. All right. Yes. So, if, if Sheriff, if you could for us then, uh, if you could compile anything that you might know about the murder victims and any of the past things, anything like that, whatever paperwork we can get, let's try and find a connection 
uh, see if there is one. Generally, you know, there's there's always some type of connection. And right, so, uh, I mean, if three, it's just three random. What's yes. that? Yeah, three random guys in a barn, and then you know. And uh, the general store's owner's daughter, those are kind of, there has to be some sort of connection to very random victims. So uh, anything, uh, physical appearances, um, if you could trace any type of family thing, what, whatever you could provide to us in terms of any type of clerical stuff yes, uh, would, be, would be incredibly helpful. Uh, meanwhile, I think we should at least take a look um, at the scene. Um, he says, well, I will certainly aid you as much as I can, but I am at my wit's end here, as I cannot make heads or tails out of anything, which is why I came to you, but I will definitely try to help in all ways that I can, because I will be continuing investigation, but I just need your help as well. Yeah, certainly, uh, but yeah, locations, anything, will uh, the more information, the more data we have, the better we'll be able to evaluate all of this. Yes, I, I've, I've tried to question Ebor, Ebor Thorne, but he is just so shocked by what he saw that he has been stone silent. Proxies, Proxy, yeah, uh, says, I might be able to get something out of it. I, I, I pray that you do. But then he goes, what good is prayer, I suppose, right now? Such well, awful things have been happening. Let's not go that far now. But... <laughs> <laughs> forgive, forgive my... My slip, my loose tongue there, Karol. I have nothing to forgive at all. I know that you're a man of the cloth. Well, a man of the chain would more likely yes. be... Uh... <laughs> But let's, um, why don't we head out to the sawmill now? Oh my god, my room is killing. It's too goddamn hot in here. Dude, the same here. <laughs> like, it was, it was like 40 degrees all day yesterday. Oh. And then all of a sudden it got up to like 80 degrees today. And I'm like, what? What's happened? It was like, it was like <laughs> early spring slash winter yesterday. Now it's summertime again? I don't understand. Yeah, it's, um. Let's make our way out there. Is there any uh, any provisionings you guys want before? How far is the sawmill? It's not far. It's um. I think it's right here. Yeah, it's 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 okay. along one of these docks. It might be twenty five. Judging by just, the, the stuff in the water. Just judge it, or just putting this out there. I would like to buy two potions and an alchemist fire whenever I get the chance again. You're, so, you're, you're able to do that in the twelve days if you have money left over. Okay, can I do 45 or 50 a piece for the potions? 50. Where are you buying them from? Um, that guy that we are really good friends with is where okay, I go that, each time. Okay, the wizard guy? Yeah. Not, not, the, uh, not the alchemist guy? No, the, <laughs> the guy that we're really good friends with. Okay. The one we sold everything about the axe from and stuff. Yes, and some of that stuff, like uh, the town wasn't completely exhaustive. You went over the town's budget in stuff it had to sell, like buy, buy from you basically. So they had they had to wait a little bit um, oh, okay. uh, for a cart from Magnamar to bring them to, to sell to Magnamar so they get more money. Mm -hmm. As you figured out the, the base limit of buying something from here, it's probably around eight to ten thousand gold pieces right. for for like a week. So, okay. I mean, the, to sell, not to buy, but to sell. Mm -hmm. So the the vendors didn't like refresh. Oh, something? they 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 will. I just haven't gotten gotcha. around to it. Yeah. Um. So I mean, you're yeah, able to do that, Zach. To be and, fair, and I, then, I did I did I did take that into consideration and order the uh, enchanted weapon. Yes. And armor. Yeah, I saw that. Um, how, how much was an alchemist fire again? I believe it was around fifty or twenty-five. I'll look it up again. All right. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Do you have it here? I don't. I don't have it available right now. But so, I'll, I'll Google this. Right, you guys make it. To the Sandpoint Lumber Mill. Um, and the, let's see here.
there are, there are a few points of interest that the sheriff points out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to mute you for a second, Zach. Um, the the timber, the timber pier. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to type. I'm just going to. I'm just going to type it out. Those are the two most obvious points right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, the oh, two right. and the murder scene. I have a trick. Roxas knows a trick that might be able to help us. I'm gonna use the detect trick. Here's the here's a little summary of what it does. Alright, alright. Basically he looks for anything that any smells or anything that's unusual and it does not use track, it uses perception. Um so right away as you approach what where are you going? The the timber pier or the murder scene? Murder scene. Okay. Right. Yeah. The, the murder scene. Roxas right out just puts his head down in the dirt and covers it with his paws. Um as the lingering scent of decay in the air is very curious. It smells almost as if an animal died somewhere in the room, and its remains were allowed to ripen. This is the lingering sense of some... of something. Like to, uh, cast up a detect evil. Um, detect evil. You don't detect any lingering ores. It seems to be far too long mm -hmm. past that. Um, so Ro Ro Roxas kind of goes. Um, Roxas kind of goes over to the axe, and as if to point that the smell is strongest on the blade of a suspicious axe, and a few footprints that were left behind. Mm. And you don't really detect any magic. But with, uh, let's see here. Since Roxas is. Yeah, go ahead and roll a perception. For Roxas. No, his descent's probably too powerful for him. Yeah, it's too. The sense overpowering. But, um. Okay. Someone can make. I'm gonna roll one. Ma no, oh, someone wow. make, a, make a survival check. I can do that. Oh, look at this. Perhaps Let's we're all a little bit rusty. <laughs> Let's all roll eight another. Yeah. Oh, Roxy. There you go. Eight another? Yeah, just roll a, roll a 1d20 and add your tracking bonus to it. And if it gets above 10, then Mooka's score increases by Yeah, your, sur your survival. Oh, okay. Is that a trade yeah. skill? No, survival is not tracking. I should know. I have to find. I... Oh my oh, god! Tangle is. Uh... It's all good. Um, a quadruple roll of survival. Trying to aid Nuka's. Yeah, definitely. Just one second here. I gotta check what my survival is. Can Roxas help out? <laughs> uh, Roxas. Uh... The reason 20. why you're doing this is that because Roxas is too overwhelmed by the smell. But Muka okay, so. points out that there are some muddy footprints that lead out towards the timber pier. Um, but as you are at the murder scene, uh, the mill interior is coated with sawdust strewn with footprints, which you saw in splashes of blood. Um, obviously, a desperate struggle took place here several hours ago. Um, the, let's see, what is your survival check? Okay. Um, it seems to be Harker's body, which was a man who worked at the lumber mill, and Katrine's body, 
a suspicious axe, and of course the lingering stench of rotten flesh. Could poor Katrine, though, as you look over, seems was killed instantly as someone pushed her into the log splitter. Oof. Her mm. mangled, ruined remains lie on the mill's lower floor amid heaps of blood-stained firewood. A pale face, obviously upset, guard stands at attention nearby, holding his nose. The log splitter itself is powered by a water <laughs> water wheel and consists of a chute in the floor with a ro with rotating saw blades that cut logs as they are fed in. Well, it seems there are no clues to be found amongst among Katrine's mangled remains. It seems that the log splitter is indeed a very efficient and visceral way to kill someone. Um, Harker's body. Harker's body has been horribly desecrated. The poor man has been affixed to the wall by several hooks normally used to hang machinery. The body is mutilated, the face carved away, the lower jaws missing entirely. His bare chest is defaced as well, bearing a strange rune in the shape of a seven-pointed star. Oh, this rune catches your eye as you've seen it before, as you still own I, uh... the Sahedron medallion once worn by New Alia. Wow. Uh, yes, you've already <laughs> identified this as a Sahedron rune. Uh, an antiquated glyph that symbolizes arcane magic once practiced in ancient Thessalonian. Um, Coral, make a DC-15 heal check. Alright. Mm. Ah. Anyone want to aid another if they have the heal skill? If it's strength? I don't have ranks in it, but I do have points. Oh, yeah. in it. Um, if you don't have ranks in it, you can't use it. Okay. Does anyone have ranks in it? I don't. Hang on. Yep. Alright, you, uh, it just seems to be... Oh, it, it, is an, it is an untrained, uh, heal is untrained. Is it? I thought it was Yeah, trained. um... I thought anybody really could do a heal. Oh, uh, I'm yeah. sure, I, I just, okay. Yeah, so if, if someone wants okay. to aid for all, just one... Yeah. Shit. Uh, <laughs> that sucked ass. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, we can get yeah. one point out of that. We can scrape one point out of that. Yeah, so. Hold on one second. I can get Negative one. <laughs> All right. We'll we'll heal no one. <laughs> See that my group is better at killing than. Uh... All right. Wow. Um, um, yeah, while the party just seems to look at this body, it's, it doesn't seem to really tell anything else. It is only I mean, uh, recognizable as Har the body is only recognizable as Harker because of a faded tattoo of a raven across his lower abdomen. With his missing face and jaw, um, it, it seems rock that you kind of noticed that even if you had a, and Karal, if even if you had a speak of dead spell, his body would be in no shape to function with that spell anyways. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I, I would assume I feel like I'm right on the verge of, of figuring something out with it. I'm, I'm going to take a little extra time. All right. Yeah, that's and, fine. Uh, and investigate, see what I can. I don't I don't want to disturb the scene. Yes. Um, I want to get closer to look at the axe. Well, okay. While you're doing that crawl, I'll let you, I'll, I'll let you get that extra point in there while you're examining it closely. Um, a hand axe is embedded in the floor near the log splitter, as if it had been dropped there. The handle is covered with bloody finger marks, and a um, let's see. 
Make uh, Muka, you investigated the blade. Make a DC 13 fortitude save. Okay. Do, do, do. All right. Um, you you start to go toward the the, the axe. You pull back in a second and cover your nose, as is a very rotten smell that any normal person would be sickened by. Mm. Uh, but you are no normal person. Um, <laughs> you. I've seen Goblin sex. Um, <laughs> <laughs> ow! Oh. oh my god, ow! Everyone gets flashbacks. It's <laughs> DC 14 fortitude. So basically, first, smears of what look like rotten flesh and fragments of bone are caked on its blade. And second, the rotten meat stink is strong on it. Man. Um, you think that this could be a religious type of uh, knowledge as it smells of like some type of undead being but Coral is currently uh, probably a dead body Coral is currently preoccupied <clears throat> for the moment Wrapped if, he, up. if he tells the rest of that I mean I'm trained in religion can uh, I yeah yeah Quadril um, you approach the blade make a DC 13 14 save oh Crap, well, that's my religion check. Alright, that's your religion. DC fortitude. Don't puke. Uh, fortitude six. Nice. Right, very nice. But, yeah. um, same as Nuka, it's a strong stench, but you, you've handled worse, you think. Um, you identified oh, this as a lingering stink of corruption as. Beyond that which a dead body can normally produce. It seems like the axe was likely used, obviously, within the last 24 hours against against some form of corporal undead. Um, let's see, what was this DC? Okay. So it seems like someone was defending themselves with this axe and slashed into this person and that okay. left the rotting stench of undead Rest. flesh on the blade. Gotcha. Okay, I let the rest of the group know that. Um, is there? Can we do a survival check on the type of blood or skin or corporal whatever to try Not and identify really. what it was? That's, that's no. a religious thing. Okay. Um, and least. this axe, it was used by, can we tell if it was used by a human or was it used to kill these two victims? It was used in defense. Used in defense against it a corporal being. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, is there any other? I can do a perception check. Is there any other indications of corporal behavior in this area? No. Um, but, however, during this time, for all, mm -hmm. um, you you investigate poking and prodding. Well, not with uh, as much as you can without disturbing the scene. Uh, and it reveals the presence of several additional wounds. Unlike the deeper slashes on the body, these smaller gashes almost seem to have been made by claws. Claws on a five-fingered, human-sized hand. The rotten scent seems stronger near these wounds. Some crazy-ass beasts. Any bites? Oh um, no, no bites. But Muka, no you no also bites. pick up those footprints heading mm -hmm. towards the timber pier. Yeah, after the axe and telling them about it, I believe I'd maybe point out that and follow them. Can I do a second? I'm gonna roll it here and then. What are you trying to do? Uh, I want to do a history check to see if I've, if I recall any. Of the previous, if I've ever heard of anything like this before, is this person a, a unique person doing these crimes, or is a cat of a historical type of some kind of religious? Is it, is it like a religious action in which they're sacrificing people, or is this just like a spell component? You know, like, it's a twenty-one for a history you, check. You don't know. It's it. You have no idea. Okay. Um, but Luca, make a. Survival check as you're following these footprints. 
okay, I'll just uh, do that. Nice. Um, so the, these footprints extend out towards the, the timber pier, um, which is connected to the Turin, Turin Rock River, um, which is this right here. It, it basically, you see, you can tell that a barefoot human man seems to be by the weight um, impressions that were left here, the size of the foot and stuff like that, and the way this person walked, you can tell it was a man, clambered up from the mud underneath the pier, crossed over to the mill, and then scaled the wall to an upper floor window. So he came in underneath the pier from the river. So he swam. Yes. And, um, and he climbed up the wall. Like, yes. does it appear there's any, yeah. like, rope? No, there's no rope. Just muddy footprints going up a wall. Yes, and you investigate closer and you see scratch marks along the wall where he was climbing up. Mm hmm. Does K Tangle think she can climb this wall? Is it, you know, uh, or you is it? You could probably do it, you think? Um, with like All right, a running well, start, you could probably climb it. Let's try it. Uh, I've got a good I climb got... skill. Oh, good. Yeah. Right, go for yeah, it. 11. Hold on a second. Shit, I'm eat my food. I haven't eaten all day. Um, it, it's difficult for you to climb right now, actually. Mm -hmm. So this man okay. obviously has some skill. Nuka climbs, and he's able to do it, but barely. All right. Um, I'm still in there with the body. What I'd actually like to do, just as a uh, curious little thing, I'd like to take out the flask that I I always try and keep blessed uh, with its holy water, holy whiskey, and just uh, sprinkle a little bit of that onto the defiled scratch marks that I saw. See if there's any reaction. I haven't eaten all day, sorry. Uh, <laughs> You're fine, dude. Coming. Okay. Um, yes, there seems to be some some steam, some smoke, as it seems to be as some, by some type of undead creature. Sentient undead creature. It seems because a zombie couldn't have pulled this off. Yeah. Well, I would have expected a zombie to bite too. Mm -hmm. uh, or those yeth hounds, so maybe can, can rule really yeth hounds out too. Can I? Uh, vampire, can vampire. I tell what was? Did the were those uh, wounds made post mortem? Would I be able to tell that at all? They look like the the big the deeper slack the deeper slashes were made post-mortem. So the, the slashes we might assume were made with the axe. Yeah, um, the small slashes seemed to be while he was, seemed to be during a struggle. And after he had finished this uh, quarrel, um, that's when some of, some of the deeper slashes were made. And obviously, when the lower jaw and all that stuff was removed, was removed. Okay, all right. Um, um, is is there anything up here no, worth noticing up here where Muka climbed, or is it just like a perching spot to jump down and um, kill people? Okay. Um. Up there, though, you don't see anything up. As you're looking down the window, um, make a DC 20 perception check Oof. plus five, like to your check. Yeah. 
Since how many you're... guards are out? How many guards are outside the sand sawmill? Just two. One. Well, there's, there's one inside the sawmill, and there's one like patrolling the area. Um, yeah, is that because? Like... Is that because Muka's climbed up there, or can I help him out? No, we it's passed it. Twenty. Yeah, twenty-one. No. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh. Nice. No use. You see, now they have this higher ground. That you see a relatively dry spot that bears a number of barefoot human tracks and a lingering stent, uh, stink of rotten flesh. And with that survival check you made earlier, um, it also seems that this point reveals that the tracks led from the river and into the river, but never away from the site. Um, the spot is hidden by several low blank, low banks of nettles, but offers a perfect view of the mill to anyone hidden there. Oh, I have old cars in my left So it seems basically like this this person who murdered these people right. went straight there and straight back. They didn't deviate. Yeah, they it went looks like they could have possibly hidden there and watched the mill. Uh, until the necessary people that you wanted to kill were there or whatever. We what don't have uh, any manipulation of time, do we? So, can't like go we, back. Like, travel back in time? <laughs> if only to scout it out. That's, <laughs> like, that's next level. Don't worry. Next, <laughs> next level, level. Like in time travel. Okay, perfect. All right, sounds good. That's a level 20 <laughs> shit right there. Um, I'd like to uh, approach the guard on the inside there. Uh, you need to get to Father Zacrian. Sorry, by Xantos. Xantos. You need to get to Father Xantos right away. You need to bring him back here now. Yeah, it seems like there's some. I don't. Like, holy shit I don't need now. questions from you. I understand you're <laughs> under orders, but I am. I I I I can't make the phone suggest. I, I, that's not more intimidating than diplomacy. Well, it depends Robert. which way he wants to go. I'm trying to be nice right uh, now. Gotcha. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, let me look up uh, diplomacy score. I changed a little. <laughs> you know who I am. You've heard of me. I'm telling you now. You need to do this. Well, yes, I have heard of you, sir, but... <laughs> Sheriff Hemlock orders. brought us here to do this investigation. Would you like to go get him instead and explain to him why you won't listen to me and why you won't aid us in this? Please, get him. Get Hemlock instead. Waste his time. All right. Um... Rox, this is just Roxy trying to screw everything over. Me and Roxas will go get Father's answers. <laughs> He clearly doesn't like being here. Uh, sorry about that, Mr. Mr. Dog. What is, uh... And so she and Roxas go get Father's man. Yes, that would be the best thing, because I am under orders from the sheriff, and I am new here to the guard. This is the first... Many apologies about that. This I, I apologize that you are an idiot. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you, oh. you clearly don't care about the fact that people are dying in your town and you think you do more good standing there doing nothing. So I, please, I am, under, I am under orders and I am new here. I cannot deviate. Please, cry me a river. That's all we need. To, I, I, I don't have time for, for this. I'm going to walk over to the axe. It and matters like not if you one. need time. I am under strict orders. And are you I am... still talking? Why? <laughs> Nobody's listening anymore. Oh, he, 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 he kind of looks down and turns away. What kind of uh, axe is this? Is it just a lumber axe? I mean, or is it like a, a hand axe? Does it actually, can we do like a magical check to see if it is now infused with like some... It's not magical. It's not? Okay. Right. I didn't know if it became magical because of that stench in the... Nasty. Right, Mook is curious about the stench. Is it like, is it like, it has no magical component? So is it like a poison, or how it's, is this? It's scent, scent of some undead being. Undead. So there's the thing. It Quadril shares. 
I don't know. Do you want me to do this a history check to share my out of game knowledge? I guess or. Well, I mean, you've already discerned that it's uh, undead. I, there is uh, there are such things as like drowned carcasses of sailors who could have uh, done it. People who die at sea who have mastery over returning from sea to land. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, it could be like a. I'm not saying it's a sailor, but I mean, drowned carcasses or um, any significant sea death could cause something that could be magical. Some like bad out. ghost thing that has yeah. a traumatic death and thusly comes back to kill things. Yeah. Is that basically. Okay. Um, uh, Drowned or something like that is what they'd be called, monster eyes. But I'm thinking against that right now. The thing yeah, just seems a little bit too know, strong, too smart, and and the fact that this isn't—it's not looking to just kill, right? There's a, there's a whole a there's a whole ritual. Right. So I mean, this. why kill this body and leave it here? Is there did he like take anything from the corpse? Well, he's calling someone out. But what about the? This? this is the second set of deaths. What happened to the first? Why didn't we ever hear about those? Why were we ever involved in that? Well, why would we? I mean? This is the town's problem. They figured they could solve it, and uh, well, I guess maybe we need some in information on those, though. I mean, who well, died there? That's what I had Hemlock try to gather up for okay. us. I want it, him to try and compile the best that he could of any information regarding, uh, you know. Backgrounds of the people, locations, things that are in common, and we can we can pour through those documents probably tonight. But while there's still daylight hours, um, we should use that time to try and investigate the best we can. So I mean, uh, um, Quadro could talk to these people, and he could get the truth out of them. Okay, so while well, you are talking, his father's antis arrives, and he's holding his. Uh, a, a cloth up to his nose as he enters and says, By the by all the gods. What <laughs> has happened? Nine. Yeah, I almost did. By, um, the nine. by all the gods. What what on this <laughs> holy earth has happened here? Uh we uh bring him up to speed and stress that we think some kind of undead sentient undead creature did this. I'd like to keep that out of your shot of the guards though. Um, I don't. Yeah. We don't need a, a panic starting of we, them. Uh, we mentioned that we don't think it was a vampire because there were no bite marks. No. Well, I my my years of studious and adventuring are long over, but I can try my best to come up with anything. Um, if if but however, if you were not able to do anything about it, Carol, then I doubt I can. Well, you hold a lot of power at the temple. Um, if nothing else, have your clerics ready. Yes, we need to be prepared for... We have no idea where this type of undead threat is coming from, but there is clearly an undead threat yes, that but, needs to be addressed. Um, very well. I will... Unfortunately, some of my clerics are still very... They're initiates. Um, as I am the head head priest and cleric of the temple, but I'm sure I could find a couple decently capable clerics to get things ready. We're still investigating here, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to purify this spot yes, upon um, our leaving. It looks so. Uh, I will wait for the sheriff to remove these bodies, and then I will try to purify as the, the citizens will probably start to wonder why the lumber mill is closed down today and we should get this up and running as soon as we can to prevent any panic as this is a very rumor mongering town all right what can uh what can i discover looking at the axe do i get um i get any better sense um no it's it, nothing that's really already been discussed Okay. Um, I guess we'll take a small break here since we got two people BRB. So, small break. Good enough. So I can eat. Mm. <laughs>